Sanchez with Marissa. Ashley Sanchez with one of the most unique assists we've seen so far in this tournament. How did you manage to redirect that ball? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> I saw the ball going out and I was like, try to get something on it and put it back into the mix. We were down one, so I was doing whatever I could. Ended up being perfect placement mm -hmm. for Sam Staub. And this second half was so back and forth between these two teams. What was the defining factor for your team to get this win? Um, well, we tied. Uh, the win, yeah. the tie. <laughs> but um, I think that they went up and we just wanted to get one back as fast as possible to try to hopefully win. We didn't get the result we wanted, but I mean, a tie and a point is good enough right now. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of telling. It felt like a win a little bit. Certainly in the standings, it'll show us a draw, but you get the feeling Washington not satisfied. Um, Washington coach Richie Burke obviously has just joined us, ladies and gentlemen. Um, coach, I'd offer you an opportunity to um, make some introductory remarks, and after which we will take questions. Thank you. Um, you know, we're just, we're just really happy to be here playing. I uh, can't thank the league enough to for getting this tournament underway. It's given us an opportunity to play three matches. It's given us an opportunity to have some younger players experience the quality and the number of really top level players that are in this league. So um, we've had three very tough matches. We've lost to the champ last year's champion. We've beaten last year's runners up and we've just tied with the team that finished third last year. So, you know, we're continually trying to make progress, but we're just happy for the opportunity to be playing and for our players to, to test themselves against the best in the league. So we're happy. Thanks, Coach. I know we all enjoyed watching a great deal. First question will come from Jan Jonathan Tannewald. Richie, Jonathan Tannewald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Jonathan. How are you, mate? Saw uh, Ashley said after the game she had no idea how she pulled the back heel off. Uh, how rehearsed was that play, and, and how happy were you to see that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Sanchito said, but that was not a rehearsed play, and that was not something that we expected. I don't think she expected it. I, I think that was more like a kung fu move. But you know, we'll take it under the circumstances. You know, she's she's obviously a bright young talent, and we're loving what she's doing for our football club. She's one of the kids I think is really benefiting from these matches. But uh, if she told you that was a rehearsed play, we do have a, a short one, but it actually goes to her feet. It doesn't go around about her hip, and she certainly doesn't throw a kung fu move, that's for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, next question from Kim McCauley. Hey, Richie. Hey, Kim, um, how are you? Yeah, uh, I thought Andy Sullivan played uh, pretty conservative in the first half, just kind of keeping things ticking over, holding position. And then the second half, she was really, you know, getting stuck into tackles, dribbling forward. Uh, was that something that you talked to her about at halftime, or is that just a decision she made on her own? We had quite a few choice words at halftime, Kim, I can tell you that, because that was not a first half that we were particularly proud of. And, and Sully was one of the, the players that I think was, you know, probably underachieving and not getting, getting in as much. You know, clearly she, she has a fantastic relationship with, with uh, Rosie when Rosie's on the field. Um, and it, it seemed to spark her into life a little bit, but we wanted her to press a little bit more, particularly on Salem. And, and, but she was trying to help Geordie and Feisty, who had, you know, sort of defensive assignments to deal with Lindsay Horan, who's, who's a special player, and, and Rocky Rodriguez. So I think she was playing a little bit more conservatively, making sure that those two were not compromised. But after half time, we made a little tactical adjustment and, and, and pushed her a little bit higher. And, you know, she got into the game a little bit more, which was good. Which is what, she, what we wanted her to do. Thanks, Coach. Next question from Jason Anderson. Uh, Jason Anderson, Black and Red United. Uh, Richie, it seemed like not just the adjustment you just mentioned um, and not just the subs having Lavelle and Hatch come in, um, it also seemed like, in general, you were able to maybe open up uh, the game a little bit, stretch it out, uh, find some ways through their midfield diamond. Um, what was it beyond what we've talked about uh, that allowed you to, to start generating more chances and get, get back in the game after you know they kind of had the better of it going into halftime? Yeah, they certainly did, Jason. I've, I've much better at the, the play in the first half. We were a little bit sixes and sevens. I felt a little bit for Avery Collins. She, she ran out the gas a little bit and then you know the occasion got to her. She's a rookie and she'll get better. but. You know, it, it wasn't just Avery's fault. We were a little bit, we were not at the races. So we had a little chat at half time. 
and uh, prompted them a little bit. Chat is probably a mild way of putting it, but we, we, we prompted them to go a little bit. And we, we wanted Sanchez and Kumi to, to not get in matchups with fullbacks, to come inside a little bit, to, to free Hachi, who'd stretch there to two centre backs and allow Kumi and Hachi to sort uh, Kumi and um, Sanchito to sort of drop in underneath, which created problems for their midfield, now checking shoulders and worried about them two coming in off the sheep, which freed now Rosie and Andy up to drive at them a little bit. Um, Jordi DiBiase was, was nursing a little bit of a hip issue through half time and it really hindered the way she played today, it was disappointing because we're looking, for, looking forward to see her play in the second half. But yeah, a little tactical adjustment where we now stepped our full backs a little bit wider and higher and asked Sanchez and Kumi to come into little pockets and uh, that, that created problems for their midfield and allowed us a little bit more space. And I think, you know, a couple of times I was just talking at the end, we got them on the counter and we were driving in the numbers up or even numbers situation and we were just a little bit wasteful with our passes, just a little bit wasteful in our interplay, when we, especially when we we're driving at, at speed, which, you know, I think we'll work on and try and get a little bit better. Uh, as a quick follow-up, uh, you mentioned uh, Kumi Okoyama. Um, how do you think she did? I know the first game didn't go so well for her. How do you think she did overall in this second game for her? You know, Kumi's a great footballer. She just she was a nervous wreck, an absolute nervous wreck in the first match, and she admitted it. And you know, she didn't expect the, the speed of play and the physicality to be what it was in this league. And, and I think she got a really rude awakening. But she's in turn, and she looks great because she's very composed. And you know, I think I might have said this earlier, Jace, that she's she's a good footballer. She's not the quickest, and she's not the strongest, but she can interplay a little bit and Rosie loves playing with her, looks, they find each other really, really well. And her and Hatchie have got a good relationship, so I think she came alight in the second half a little bit, but again, she's finding a way and she'll she'll improve and they'll all improve moving towards the knockout rounds, that's our, that's our intention. But I think Kumi in particular now is starting to feel a little bit more at home, a little bit more like she can contribute, a little bit more like she'll find her place in this game. Um, so we're looking for a little, a little bit better, a little bit more from her moving forward. Thanks, Coach. Last question from Grant Weidenfeld. Coach, uh, Grant Weidenfeld, Keeper Notes. Do you have a, an update on the condition of Tegan McGrady? She took a hit there in the last play. Hey, Grant. Yeah, yeah. You know, and thanks for asking about that. Yeah, she, she's potentially dislocated a jaw. She's going to go to the emergency room right now for some x-rays and to make sure that her, her bite is actually not been compromised and not in a bad place. It was a little bit of a whack and it's, you know, it's two games now where she's had some contact in the head and, you know, she had a, the cheek injury in the first match um, and now she's had this one. So we're hoping that we get the all clear, but the doctor's a little bit concerned that there was perhaps a dislocation. So she's checking that out right now. But, um, you know, Tiggy's done two back-to-back -back 90s right now and that might, <laughs> that might be more cumulative minutes than she did all last year when she was injured quite a bit. So she's very happy to be playing the minutes, but obviously not happy to be taking bangs in the head. So fingers crossed that she's, she's going to be okay as we move forward. Well, Coach, if you wouldn't mind indulging us, I know it's late. We have one final question from Melina Gaspar. Absolutely. Hi, Coach. Hey, uh, Melina. This is Melina from Football Ace. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a very entertaining match. Your team pressed pretty well. Um, they scored a great goal, but so had a great night too, among other things. So how far is your team from the vision you had for it before this tournament started? Great question. Um, you know, we, we, we didn't really set the bar high and have massive expectations because we knew we had a very, very young group. And our starting group today had seven players that have only had one year or less in the NWSL. That's what we started with. Um, you exclude Bledsoe, Nielsen, um, Sullivan, <clears throat> and Yokoyama is a new player to the league. So we were very young. We were just so grateful to have these matches and give the, the players an opportunity to grow because the alternative wasn't great, a full year off. So we haven't really set the bar high. We're just we're trying to push them and get them better every single time. I don't think we've really been ourselves in any of the three matches so far. We haven't imposed ourselves in a way that I'd like us to. We, we like to keep the ball. We like to be possession oriented. We haven't really done as an, an, enough of that, as much as that as we had done previously. And it's basically because we're, we're finding our way with our younger players. We're, we're getting them to understand how we want to play and how we want to build from the back and how we want to get on the football in certain places. It's taking a little bit of time and I think it's going to be a work in progress. Normally at this stage, you know, July, we'd have had maybe 
16, 17, 18 matches under our belts, including four or five pre-season games, which would have probably moved us on along a little bit quicker than we are right now. But everybody's in the same boat. The only difference, I would say, that a lot of these other teams have got very experienced and very established players. We've got a very, very young group of players that we're trying to grow. And But the bar's not high, and we, uh, we're just grateful for the minutes and grateful for the opportunity to now teach them and help them become better. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, Melina. Uh, Coach, that's it for tonight. I appreciate you taking the time. I know we're